Welcome to this web, web tutorial on the Barrel Gordon model. This is uh, to give you an introduction into the main elements of, I would say, the key model for economic policy making with the focus on monetary policy. It combines uh, economic insights from the ESLM and uh, the aggregate demand and supply models, combines this with the political economy approach of policy preferences. In this sheet, you see the basic setup of the bear rogue order model. On the left, I've written this out into the main equations, and on the right-hand side, you see the main graph of the bear order model. Um, there are obvious connections between the two. So I will start with an overall picture of the economy, which combines all the other models. And the economy is modeled uh, according to the Phillips curve uh, theory. And first on the left, you see that the basic relation between unemployment U and inflation P is modeled as uh, U is UN minus A and then the difference between the actual inflation and the expected inflation. On the right hand side, you see that the Phillips curve is modeled as a straight line with slope A. The intuition behind this is that if the inflation rate is higher than the expected inflation, then the real wage costs are lower, uh, therefore firms hire more people, and that means that unemployment is lower than the natural rate of unemployment, or to be more precise, uh, that uh, unemployment is declining. So this is why the uh, curve is sloping downward in the right hand, uh, on the right hand side. Clearly, if we have a higher level of expected inflation, this shifts up the curve, minus times minus. So, um, if, it, if people already have a higher level of uh, expected inflation, you need an even higher level of actual inflation to push the unemployment rate below the natural rate. But keep in mind, uh, higher expected levels of inflation, higher Phillips curve. Then we move to the policy preferences which is the curve shown on the right. Here you see that Z is a loss curve, in the sense is that if the unemployment rate differs from the uh, desired unemployment rate U star, then this creates a loss. You see uh, that it's squared, so it doesn't matter whether U is lower than U star or higher than U star, as long as there's a difference squared, this means that there is a loss. So if unemployment differs from the desired level U star, it creates a loss. The squared term is important for the curvatory. If it's squared, then the bigger the difference between the actual unemployment and the desired level of unemployment, this exponentially adds to the loss function. The same holds for the inflation rate P squared. The higher the level of the actual inflation and the higher the losses. The value that the policymaker attaches to differences in unemployment and inflation with respect to their bliss or preferred levels is measured by the B, which is the parameter that attaches the weight to the unemployment differences. So the higher B, the more weight the policymaker attaches to the differences in the unemployment outcome, and the lower B, the more uh, the higher the preferences of the policymaker are for inflation. This means that the higher B is, the more the policymaker cares for unemployment relative to inflation. Then, ad hoc, we impose a Barrow Gordon objective, which means that the desired unemployment rate you star is actually lower than the natural rate. As we know, this natural rate is a rate that will be in place in the long run and it reflects the unemployment level because of frictions in the labor market. So we see a complete picture where the Phillips curve uh, takes in all stylized elements of the economy. We have the policy preferences modeled as a loss function, and we have some policy objective, which is this U star. You see the dotted line to the right, which actually is the outcome of this model. Now what we want to do is to derive this uh, outcome mathematically. So our key question is, how can we find the inflation rate that the policymaker will actually set given this structure of the economy? 
Now, or, we already see this in the graph on the right-hand side, uh, where the Phillips curve is tangent to the policy preferences. Actually, this minimizes the losses given what is possible uh, in the economy, and therefore given the Phillips curve. As we can see, given the, that the objective of the policymaker is to have an unemployment rate lower than a natural rate, initially, the outcome of the economy is that the unemployment rate dot line is lower than the lower equilibrium. So what we first want to do is, when we want to find uh, this inflation rate, we have to combine the policy preferences, uh, and we have to minimize the loss function, given what is possible in the Phillips curve. So we have to first uh, minimize the losses z, which would mean that we will want to take the first derivative to z and set that equal to zero. However, if we look at z, we want to uh, maximize, or in this case minimize z, with respect to the inflation level, that is the optimal policy for the policymaker, but we see this u and this u star. So we first have to substitute elements, which consist only of exogenous elements and the inflation rate into z, and then differentiate it with respect to the inflation rate b. What we can then do is for u we substitute the Phillips curve, and for u star we, uh, we substitute the objectives, and then we have a function of z, which only consists of un, which is an exogenous long-run uh, 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 long element of the model, and we have the uh, inflation and the expected inflation. And we assume that the expected inflation is given, uh, and is based from, for example, for the first time on adaptive uh, expectations, but we will clearly change this assumption later. So if we substitute the Phillips curve and the barrow gordon objective in the policy preferences, we get the following result. Uh, we have to rewrite this a bit, that z equals this first equation. Using the chain rule, you see that the first element be between the square brackets uh, is also squared, so you have to uh, look this up maybe a bit, but if you're good in math, you know this, the t comes in front, and then two minus, the 2 comes in front, 2 minus 1, and then you take the dif differentiation of what is within the square brackets with respect to p, uh, uh, and you, and you, uh, you add that. Uh, then using the chain rule and minimizing losses, which means that you set, uh, you take the first derivative dz dp and equal that to zero, you can then solve for p the inflation rate from which it follows that p star, which is then the first best inflation chosen by the policymaker, equals this equation. Now, this is what the policymaker will choose, and it consists of two elements. So the first one you see a, b, kappa, and un, and the first element, and that are only the exogenous. So this is, let's say, a number of the economy. And then the second term consists of this expected inflation rate. So you see that the actual inflation rate is increasing in the expected inflation rate. And the intuition behind that is that the policymaker aims to push unemployment below the natural rate. So if the expected inflation rate goes up, then the policymaker chooses a higher inflation rate to avoid unemployment, uh, or actually wants to decrease in unemployment. You also see that if, as the first element is uh, 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 an exogenous variable, of consists of only exogenous variables, this also means that the actual inflation rate that will be chosen is only a function of the expected inflation rate. Now, if we have this, then we can have some important results. So the first equilibrium result is, suppose that the expected inflation rate of the public is zero. This is, of course, rather naive, because the policy, the, the public should actually expect the, the policymaker to have a positive inflation if they would know that he tries to push unemployment below the natural rate. But suppose that the public has this expectation that there will be zero inflation. Then the actual outcome of inflation, P star, equals what you see here, uh, which is actually a positive number, as we are expecting. And then if we substitute that back into the loss function z, uh, 
And then um, and the, 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 the loss function equals that. Now, what is that is some kind of a naive result. What is a more, let's say, uh, uh, fundamentally um, uh, uh, right, I would say, uh, um, prediction of the public would mean that the public would say, well, we form our uh, inflation expectations based on what on the model actually itself. So we know the preferences of the policymaker. And if we know the policymaker's preferences, then the expected inflation rate actually is the chosen uh, inflation rate. And why would the public not see uh, through the policymaker's preferences and make the right prediction? This is in the second line. So what if we model that the expected inflation rate actually is the, uh, the, uh, the, the actual outcome? No, it's not that the, the public is by definition right, but that they know the underlying model of the policymaker. And then uh, the inflation outcome is actually what is seen there. And what you observe, of course, is that uh, if a one, as 1 plus a squared b is larger than 0, that actually the inflation outcome on the rational expectation is quite a bit higher. So the intuition behind that is that if the if public expects uh, a higher level of inflation, then this gives an incentive to the policymaker to have an even higher level of inflation. This again is anticipated by the public. And this increases and increases and increases the inflation rate until the inflation rate is so high that the policymaker has no extra incentive to push the inflation rate even higher. Uh, so that uh, he doesn't value uh, lower employment debt anymore, which is actually could actually be a quite high inflation rate. And uh, if that is the case, uh, then uh, the rational and materialized level of inflation is uh, AB times 1 minus kappa UN. Clearly, the rational uh, expectations outcome of losses is substantially higher. And if the public forms a naive expectation of P is zero. And uh, you can see that B times 1 plus, o, one plus A squared over B is larger than what you see before. Now contrast with some kind of a rule which says, okay, uh, we uh, shoot the central banker uh, if there's any inflation. That's a that may be a credible commitment so that If P star is zero, which is then the rule, what would then be the outcome? Well, clearly, uh, if that is the outcome, we don't have to calculate the outcome because it's zero. And we see that the losses are there. Well, we then observe that B is actually quite small if we compare this. And again, the intuition is if we don't have a rule that says inflation is zero, then the public expects that the policymaker will inflate. Uh, if, the pol if the public expects this, the policymaker will actually inflate more, uh, which can only be uh, countered by having a rule and therefore have some losses in the economy. So the central Barrow Gordon result is that actually, if we have a rule of zero inflation, this is not first best with respect to the shocks, clearly, uh, but it is better than having no rule at all, because then we would have the rational expectations outcome. So rules are better than discretion in this case.